All right, we're gonna prep the payload bay for fiberglass. Um, curiously, I weighed it and it was about 10.3 grams right now. Um, so we're gonna peel a little glassine off, see how much it weighs then, just as an experiment, see how much a glassine weighs. And then after we glass it, we'll weigh it again, and see how much fiberglass and epoxy we added. Um, Kind of a neat experiment and also i wouldn't say nervous i was just hesitant this is like a big tube you know stuff costs money and i'm just ripping it apart on purpose um, but it's a necessary evil i guess and naturally this one's gonna fight me to start I think so far we've been able to peel everyone in one shot. So remember that tip about trying to keep this 90 degrees or more acute? Seems to be working still. Oh yeah. Look at that. All right. Jump over to my little uh, jeweler scale to weigh my jewels. 9.53. Um, yeah, we could do that math out. 10, 3, minus 9, 5, call it. So, 0.8 ounces. I mean, I guess we could try to fact check it by crumpling this up and weighing this. Yeah, 0.76. Yeah, that pretty much works out. Cool. Oh, well, Sean, what are you doing? Well, I'm sweeping the floor, self, because I'm about to spread out some fiber fiberglass. Well, I mean, I guess we might as well talk about that. I'm going to make your old man noises. Um, what I have here is... Uh, actually, it says right on it somewhere. It's 15 yards of 6 ounce boat cloth. Why would I have fiberglass cloth for a boat? Well, once upon a time, I was building a wooden sailboat. So I have a bunch of this hanging around. Um, that project started probably seven years ago. I never finished it. And I figured since I am actively building a rocket right now, maybe this is a better use for it. What I've got going on is we've got these seven and a half inch diameter tubes. And if you do a little math or if you just measure, you need about 25 inches of cloth to make one layer around the tube. I want to do two layers of this cloth. So I need 50 inches. Conveniently, the roll is 60 inches wide so rather than cut 50 inches this way and waste a bunch because i only need it to be 12 inches wide um i'm gonna rip a length of cloth out this way um, and that's how we'll handle it so first things first i just want to make sure that i got a straight edge down there i'm going to do that by just peeling off one of these and if i get a whole one of these means that's a straight edge that's kind of a neat trick that works um you'll find this in your bed later tonight and it's going to chase you and haunt you for about a week if you don't throw it away right now so i need a piece for my switch band we're going to make that about three inch it's a two inch switch band that gives me a half inch either side of overhang so we're going to put a mark here I'm going to take an old pair of needle nose pliers and pull on one strand and use that as a cutting guide. Oh, 
pull. So now I've got a nice cut line to follow. A nice good pair of scissors. All right. And then lengthwise. Boy, I hope this roll was 60 inches like I thought. All right. Look at that. One or two errant strands will pull. That is like a precisely square three inch by 50 inch strip for the switch band. So it's time to start fiberglass and the airframes. Um, so I've been practicing this on much smaller tubes. Um, and honestly, the first one I did came out terrible. <laughs> I don't know if you can see all these air pockets and stuff, but it did not go well, um, which was to be expected though. Um, this is probably going to get turned into some minimum diameter 38 inch rocket anyways. Um, but so first practice round didn't go well. Second one came out much better. Um, and the major difference besides having a little bit more experience was I tried two wraps of peel ply or of uh, porous Teflon on this. And I think the second wrap of that actually like hurt me more than it helped. And this was just one wrap of that porous Teflon. So I um, figured, hey, we've done two <laughs> tubes this size. We might as well jump into seven and a half inch diameter ones. Why not? Um, yeah. So I've got some epoxy mixed up. I am using Total Bolt, Total Bolt, <laughs> Total Boat Epoxy. Um, I happen to have like, what is this, a gallon? Yeah, of it lying around from another project that I never started from like seven years ago. So yeah, this is Boat Epoxy, it's seven years old. Um, and hopefully I can show you guys that it will work just fine. So um, the regular resin, and their hardener is the slow. Um, so this is like, you know, in ideal temps, you probably have like two hours of working time. Um, down here, it's actually 53 degrees. So um, I actually have to wait about eight hours, I found. So I'll do this. It's always like 9, 10 o'clock when we're hanging out. Um, I find I end up laying up a tube and the next morning I can come down and trim it. It's still in the leathery sage just because it's so cold down here and it's slow epoxy. So, so I'm in absolutely no rush, which is nice because um, it's the first time I'm doing something this big anyways. Um, the setup's pretty simple. Two saw horses, put some clamps on the end so my PVC mandrel or whatever you want to call this won't fall. Um, and I'm hoping that these tubes have enough rigidity to keep round as they cure. Um, I don't know. We'll see if they're right around. Oh, well, I'll have an oval rocket. Um, so my epoxy's mixed up. Basically went to Harbor Freight, bought myself there, you know, 50, I, I got a, a pack, 36 pack of their chip buses. Um, so I'll use those. So yeah, without further ado. Here we go. I'm gonna start by just, oh, I've also drawn two straight lines across these tubes just as a reference, you know, where to begin and end. So I'm gonna start by epoxying the cardboard to and then we'll lay our glass on it after the fact. Start wetting it out. Now I've weighed each pre-cut piece of cloth I'm gonna put on here. Um, for this switch band, the cloth was about 0.4 ounces worth. Um, and then for this one, it was like 2.8 ounces. Um, conveniently, 
those pump handles um, are worth their weight in gold. They dispense, and I've measured this, like within the hundredth of an ounce, <laughs> or a few hundredths of an ounce, exactly one ounce of uh, epoxy once it's mixed. So I basically have one pump for the switch band, and then I'll do three pumps for that. And that'll give me plenty of extra to work with, I hope. Um, the other thing I'm going to try, which I haven't really done in the past, is really try to wet out that porous Teflon. Um, in my trial runs, I've kind of just laid it on and let it soak up any excess epoxy that was hanging out. I'm going to make a concerted effort to uh, actually try to wet it out. Um, I'm also not concerned about the epoxy that's getting on this PVC. One, I'm not worried about it adhering to it, and two, I'm kind of hoping that <laughs> any little bit of epoxy that ends up on the inside of this helps just kind of like stiffen it anyways, um, especially these edges. Um, on my motor mount tubes and stuff, I actually go around with CA to reinforce those. I'm hoping to just kind of let this epoxy dribble everywhere and do it sort of naturally. So here's my first piece of glass. Here's my line that I've drawn on there. And we're just gonna start. The glass is probably about an inch wider than it needs to be. That was just to give me a little leeway here. Um, this first piece I'm just gonna kinda tack on by dabbing it. We'll get these pieces out of here. Now for the porous Teflon. Lined up nice and straight. It is quite literally the next morning. I am still in my PJs. Um, and it's time to trim these guys. So this is what people call the leathery... Leather... <laughs> leather leathery stage um it's still a little sticky well okay the porous teflon some of it's still a little sticky but everything else is pretty much past its tacky stage and you're just going to take a brand new razor blade and i keep it kind of at a shallow angle that way as i'm trimming around the edge it's still pushing the fibers in and i'm not like pulling them off the frame but in theory if you catch it and the window's pretty big, so they don't stress about trying to do this, but um, you can see, you can just run your razor knife around. And if you wait till it's fully hardened, you're in for a world of pain because you're gonna be like <clears throat> dremeling this and then sanding it forever. Whereas right now we can do about 90% of the cutting as simple as this. And don't get me wrong, we're probably still going to have to sand after, but... This is just worlds easier. And it's worth taking your time trying to get as close as you can to the cardboard. Oh, you can see right here my knife's getting a little gooped. So it's probably time to change this blade. And blades are cheap compared to my time, so I'm not going to stress about that material cost. And that's that. So 7.30. So it's been like nine and a half hours, nine hours. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the peel ply on one. And we'll let the other one set up even more. And we'll see which one looks nicer. This is kind of an experiment for myself. But look at that, huh? 
nice fiberglass switch band right there. You can still see a lot of texture in some areas. I probably could have wet it out a little bit better, but for my first big tube, I am more than satisfied. Alright, time to strip off this peel ply, see what we're dealing with. This is actually looking really good, holy cow. much better than I actually thought it would look. So you can see, you know, there's a very small texture. There's some tiny, teeny little areas that, you know, might not be perfect, but um, that'll need a little bit of fill. But for the most part, this came out great. Yeah, I'll have to fill. Well, that's gonna get big fillets anyways and tip to tip. So up here, a little bit there. Um, not bad though. 